Okay, in this video, we are going to look into the SBUS radio protocol used in the RC model industry and how to interface an SBUS receiver to a microcontroller so we can decode the control command packets sent by the transmitter, which you can see here, to the receiver. Now, the SBUS protocol was developed by Futaba and other vendors like FR Sky and RadioMaster, which make this receiver and transmitter, use this protocol. Now, the SBUS protocol is serial. It's UART compatible. It has 16 channels, so we can control 16 servos or 16 functions with one wire. Now, if you look at the control wire, there's three pins. There's plus 5 volts, there's ground, and then there's the SBUS data line. Now, back in the early days, we had PWM, like this receiver here, we had a connector for each servo. Now, with, with SBUS, we only have one wire, so it makes, it makes the wiring a lot simpler and we could hook it up to a UART, to a microcontroller, so we could decode the control packets. Okay, if we have a look at the SBUS data line serial output with a scope, this is what we'll see. We'll see some data packets. Now these data packets are 3 milliseconds in duration, with 6 milliseconds quiet time, and then the packet, and this is repeated over and over again. So every 6 milliseconds we get this packet, which contains 25 bytes in each packet. Now the output of my receiver, is not UART compatible. I had to put it through an inverter so my idle time would be high. So I have a high idle time and we have a start bit which goes low and then our data bits. Now if you look at the specs, we're running this at 100 k baud with 8 data bits, even parity and 2 stop bits. Now each data packet starts with a 0F hex, that's a header byte, and it'll end with a 00, zero footer byte. So that's our start of our packet, our end of our packet, and inside each packet is be 25 bytes. Now inside the packet we could actually get 0F bytes or 00, zero bytes so we have to sync it on the quiet time. So we have to see where the quiet time is to sync it for the first byte otherwise we'll get, we'll get out of sync. So that's basically the spec there. So now all we have to do is take this data feed it into a microcontroller so we could decode the 25 data bytes. Okay before we hook up our receiver to our microcontroller we could hook it up to our computer through an FTDI module through our USB port into a serial terminal program called RealTerm. So I have my receiver and the SBUS output is inverted by this transistor. It's a 2N3904 NPN transistor and the, output, the inverted output is fed into the RX line of the FTDI module which is fed into our computer. So if you see the schematic, the FTDI module is jumpered for 5 volts and that 5 volts is powering the receiver that's bus receiver and then output of the receiver is inverted by the transistor which is fed into the RX pin of the FTDI module. Okay here's my transmitter setup. My mode is multi, the type is FR Sky X and the protocol is D16 and I have 16 channels and I bound my receiver to my transmitter. Okay I have my receiver powered up and it's connected to my FTDI module and I'm running real term and I'm monitoring the data output, the SBUS output from my receiver. So if you look at the, the setup, I got my baud rate set for 100k, parity is even, data bits is 8, stop bits is 2, and if we go over to the display, I have it set up for hex space, and I have a sync, a binary sync character set up as hex 00 and hex 0f, that's going to synchronize my data output. If I take away the sync, that's what you get. So we'll put the sync back in. Now you can see the very first byte, the starting byte, is 0F. And then, and then you got E0 and it goes all the way to the end where you got 0, 0. That's our ending byte. So we have our a start byte of 0F, our ending byte of 0, 0. Now if I take my, my transmitter and move some of the controls, you can see at the very left, you can see the bytes changing. I'll do some switches. There's some toggle switches. You can see the data changing. So we know our setup is working. We're getting activity and it's actually monitoring my transmitter. So now we can actually hook it up to a microcontroller to decode those command bytes. Okay next we have to start writing code. So I read in one packet of 25 bytes and put that into memory. We can see our first byte of 0F, our last byte of 0, 0. Now we could truncate those bytes take them away and we'll have 23 bytes left. 
Then we can take away the flag byte. I'll get into that later. And we'll have 22 bytes of command bytes. These here. Now 22 bytes, we have to make 16 channels. So each channel will have 11 bits. Now the receiver is spitting out 8-bit bytes. And we have to convert them into 11-bit chunks. So what I do, I lay all my bytes in memory in a row. And with the least significant bit on the very right, you can see that here. So that's byte number 1, 2, 3, 4. So byte number 1, that's, that's channel 1, it has to borrow 3 bits from this byte to get 11 bits. Now this byte only has 5 left, so it has to borrow 6 from this byte. This one will only have 2 left, and it goes all the way down. Everybody's taken 11-bit chunks. So what I do, I put all my bytes in memory, and I convert it into a bitmap. So I'll have 176 bytes. So this bit here is bit 175 and goes all the way down to bit 0. Now I could cut anywhere I want. So I cut in increments of 11 bits. And that will give me my 16 channels of 11 bits for my commands. Okay, I have my SBUS receiver, my RadioMaster R161, connected up to my Raspberry Pi Pico through an inverting transistor. So this transistor will invert the signal coming out of the receiver also, we'll take the 5 volt level and take it down to 3.3 volts to feed into the UART of the Pico. So I have code running on the Pico. It's written in fourth, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll power it up. Then we'll hook up my computer to the FTDI module, and we can monitor the commands coming out of my transmitter. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, and it's connected to my Pico, which is monitoring the output of my SBUS receiver, my R161. So we can do a data dump, we can have a look at the data that's coming out of the receiver. So I'll do a data dump. So that's actually the memory in the Pico. Now that data dump is put into the SBUS register, so we can have a look at that. So E0 is channel 1. Now I've taken off the header byte, 0F, and I've taken off the footer byte, 00. So that's the plain data bytes there from E0 all the way to 00. Now the 00 at the very end is the flag byte. Now I put it in memory the other way around, so it will look at look like a bitmap, so we can look at that. And look at the SBUS register. You can see it's backwards, so E0 is at the very right, that's channel 1. And the flag register is on the very left, 00. Now we'll look at some updates, so we'll do dump 2 and do it many times. Now when I go to my controller, my transmitter, I'm activating the controls. You can see the you can see the bytes changing. Do some toggle switches. Okay, we'll stop that. Now we'll look at the display. This is the 11-bit chunks. So there's channel 1. You can see the lowest value is 172, the highest value is 1810. Channel 2 is my throttle. I yaw. I do some toggle switches. I only got eight channels set up. Now, if you look at the flags at the very bottom, when the receiver doesn't see the transmitter, if it goes out of range or if the transmitter shuts off, we'll get a flag indicating that, and it'll go into fail-safe mode. So, if you look at my throttle, this is my throttle here. So at the very lowest, it's 172. That's the throttle is off. So full throttle is 1810. Now if I shut off the transmitter and watch the flags, the flags come on, and you see my throttle has gone down to zero. So I shut the throttle down. It's in fail-safe mode. So if I turn on the transmitter, it should, should come back. So now it's back to normal again. It sees the transmitter. So now I have control and it's picking it up. Okay, here's the code running on the Pico and it's written in fourth, my crisp fourth. So I'm using the KISS method, keep it simple and the code will be simple. So the first word we see is read channels. So this code here will read one packet. So the first thing it does, initializes UART1, 200 kbaud, 8 data bits, even parity, and 2 stop bits. Then it waits for a quiet time. That's the quiet time between the two packets. When it sees the quiet time, then it'll start taking in bytes on the next packet. It'll take in these bytes, and there's your starting address of the bitmap. So it puts all the bytes in the bitmap, 
and they're in a certain order so we could chop them up into 11-bit chunks so this is where we chop it up so once we got the bytes into the bitmap we just give it a, a bit number so here's bit 183 that's for channel 1 bit 172 is for channel 2 and you can see there's the difference between these two is 11 so as it goes down we just give it the bit number and it will take in the 11-bit chunk and that will be our channel data so now we take that channel data and we could use it for our remote control system okay I have a little demo set up where I could control five LEDs on my breadboard using channel one, this lever here so as I pull it over you can see the LEDs come on, it's pretty responsive I can go slowly one at a time and bring it down so it's monitoring the 11-bit channel data on channel one and then I apply that to the LEDs so this technique is used a lot in the movie industry for special effects to control say a mechanical robot or a dinosaur so you can come up with your own radio control system by taking the values, 11-bit values of all 16 channels and then convert them to, into signals to control your setup